My name is Kelly. I'm the event specialist here. We are so excited for this new book. Thank you so much for coming out to help celebrate. Now, without further ado, please help me welcome number one New York Times best-selling author and host of The Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon! Thank you very much. so much. This is, I love you too. Hey, see you buddy. I love you more. I love that. Uh, this is, guy, how exciting. This is the first, this is the first in-store book event since COVID. This is it. We did it. Barnes and Noble, we're like, yeah, do you want to do it? I'm, we're doing it virtually, which I'm great. I'm so happy. Hi, everyone watching virtually, but I go, I want to see people here too. I mean, it's happening. We're, we're coming back. New York City is coming back. Uh, and uh, I, I actually wanted to celebrate that, uh, that we're coming back. Uh, I, I wrote a little song, and I thought, if you don't mind, I'd like to sing it for you right now. Right? Uh, it's called uh, New York is, is Back. Thank you for being here virtually. Thanks for being here in person. This is awesome. I don't care if you're Moderna or Pfizer, Johnson and Johnson or Horse Tranquilizer. I know New York's coming back. We got the Rangers, Yankees, Mets, Knicks and Nets. We cheer for the Giants and we pray for the Jets. I know New York's coming back. Already complaining about the cold. We all hate Bill de Blasio. Well, I know New York City's back. We got the NYPD and the FDNY. When I tried out, they said you look like more of a post office guy. Well, I know New York's coming back. All the tourists have returned Doing what they do Walking real slowly down the sidewalk Right in front of you Even though some of the seats are wet The subway is still packed I know streaming this worldwide this thing is global 200 crazy New Yorkers at Union Square Bonds and Nova I know New York's coming back New York is back you can't keep us down you can travel the world but there's no place like this town I know New York's coming back. I know New York City's coming back. Baby steps, we're getting there. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Thank you for being here, thanks for tuning in. Thank you for watching the first live event since COVID, come on. We're gonna get there. We're getting there. Baby steps. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is this book is Nana loves you more, and this is the uh, collection. Uh, I guess it started with Dada, really, you know, uh, which kind of started as a joke. Uh, I just wanted to do a thing about you know your baby's first word will be Dada, uh, like there was a competition between moms and dads. Like, what are you gonna say first? And uh, so I uh, I uh, I did that book just to be just for have something fun out there, and it was a hit. And so thank you for, uh, for buying it and thank you for reading it uh, to, your, to your kids. And then what happened was, uh, it got even crazier, kids started reading the book to me through social media. And, and, and parents were like, 
this is so weird. Jimmy, you're teaching our kids how to read. And I'm like, oh yeah, that was my plan the whole time. Yeah, what am I talking I didn't know I did. I'm gonna go, I'm just, just, so I did Dada, then we did Mama. And then I did a book called This Is Baby, where it's more of like a pointing out, this is your baby's eyes, this is your toes, this is your nose, just because I love my uh, little girls. And uh, I just remember doing that, like, you know, where's your nose and can you touch your eye? Where's your, you know? Uh, and so then I had a lot of uh, grandmas come up to me and like, <laughs> excuse me, uh, you're missing the main ingredient. Yeah, I'm getting a double thumbs up there from someone very cute. And so uh, I go, I gotta do something great for, for, for grandmas, for nanas, for whatever you call your grandma, non, Nona, uh, Gigi, Mima, uh, Abuela. Uh, Lola. Uh, Lola. Yeah, it, yeah, everyone's got the name. So you can substitute the name for nanny. Grammy? Nanny. Nanny, of course, nanny fits as well. Uh, um, uh, and uh, so I was trying to think of what the angle is for this book, and then I was like, you know what, I had great, uh, really fantastic grandmas growing up. I was lucky enough, lucky enough to meet my grandma uh, on both sides. And it's just the best. And I think grandmas have nothing but love to give. You know, they, they, they've already done, they've already raised their kids. Now they have the grandkids, like, they're just going to love you. And, and, you know, and I, I put a line in the book, it's a little weepy, but it's not that bad. But uh, uh, it's forever. And from, from one to you're 104, you'll always know, love Nana, but Nana loves you more. Uh, and it's like, you'll always have, even when Nana's, you know, if she's not around anymore, let's say she's always in your heart. And it, it, the love for a grandma just sticks with you forever. And it's, uh, I, I wanted to do something like that. So I, I just started rhyming the words. Rhyming is best for me because it's easier for, for dads to read. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know the rhythm of you know the cadence of it all. So I, I go. I, I wanted to rhyme it, and I think the kids, uh, uh, of the other books, respond to when the words rhyme. Um, and so, if it's okay with you, I'd like to read you right now. Uh, uh, Nana loves you more, and I'm happy that you're here. Thank you so much for being here. I love it. Uh, okay, Nana loves you more. All right. And we have two uh, pandas. That's that's the Nana, and that's the baby. Uh, yeah. uh, and I always have little ducks somewhere in my books that just say quack <laughs> for no reason. Only reason is because they just don't quite understand. And so they just, they just say quack all the time. So if you read the other books, you're like, you can always make a baby laugh by saying uh, quack. Okay, here we go. Uh, I should say the uh, Miguel Ordonez is the uh, artist. Uh, and I've worked with uh, him since the Dada books. He writes the cleanest, cutest, uh, the drawings ever, and it's just, it's just, just so much detail, but still in just the cleanest way. Uh, and I'm in love with them, and we've known each other for a long time now. And uh, and Firewell and friends, thank you to those guys as well. Uh, here we go. Nana will read to you and sing you to sleep, and fill you with memories that you'll always keep. There's the baby going to sleep in their bed. She's falling asleep. Yeah, and there's Nana reading, reading a book to baby. Uh, forever, from one past 104, you'll always love Nana, but Nana loves you more. Uh, and that's a little birthday cake there, and there's Nana just giving love back. And the idea is, no matter what you think of, no matter what you can even imagine, Nana loves you more than that. More than the moon? More than the stars? More than all the planets by far. More than Paris and the Eiffel Tower. More than cats with super cat powers. <laughs> and there's a little teddy bear too, the baby has over there, yeah. Uh, more than rainbows. More than dreams. More than three scoops of your favorite ice cream. What? You're clapping on that one. What's your favorite ice cream? Mint and chocolate chip, me too. That's us. Yes, we're both mint chocolate chip people. Love it. <laughs> wow, you're a connoisseur. You really, yeah, you're just naming fl every flavor now. Yeah. All right, we're at Barnes & Noble on a Basket Robbins. Here we go. All right, here we go. Thank you. More than a bath overflowing with bubbles? Nana will even love you when you get in trouble. Look at all those bubbles. You can just barely see the eyeballs in the bubbles. Yeah. They're in trouble. 
Uh, banana will always love you. More than whales? More than cheese? More than flowers and rivers and trees? More than candy and things that are sweet? Do you like candy too? I knew it. I knew you would like candy. What kind of candy? Right now you have candy in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Thank gosh you're wearing that mask. You're covering up the candy secret. Yeah, I see you sneaking some Skittles in there. Okay, more than anyone that you'll than you'll ever meet. More than the biggest of all birthday cakes. I love you more than any cake I could bake. More than swimming in chocolatey fountains. More than the feeling when you climb a huge mountain. More than the horns of a giant big band. I hear my own music when I'm holding your hand. <laughs> quack. Yeah, you got that was you. You, you got the yeah, that guy got quack. Yeah, good. Yeah, you look at it. Yeah, once you yeah, quack. Can I hear all the kids say quack? Yeah, perfect. Awesome. I heard a couple of adults say quack too, but thank you for that. More than fireworks that light up the skies, more than the sunsets and the sunrise. Mouse. Thank you. You said that even with candy in your mouth. Amazing, very talented. More than gold or treasure or money, you are my treasure. You are my honey. If you're lost in the waters, I will lead you ashore. I know you love Nana, but Nana loves you more. <laughs> and that's it right there. That's the book. Sweet. I love it. This is the first time I read that out loud, really. I don't know I've had uh, uh, our, our Nana read it to my girls, and uh, uh, of course I've read it just in my head, but that was the first time I read it to, uh, to, to kids. I don't even think I've read it to my own children. Yeah, but I wanted to say that for Nana and let uh, her do it. Um, uh, guys, I, I just love that you made the trip out here. I love the, that even kids stayed up past their bedtime to be here, uh, and I'm sure the candy helps, but, uh, but thank you for the energy. Um, uh, what I thought I'd do now, if it's okay with you, is maybe take some questions from you guys. Do you have any questions about me or the show or the book or life? Yeah? Right there. Hello. Oh, thank you. Oh, there's a microphone for you. Oh, oh we're getting high okay. tech. I just want to say, um, ask you, how proud are you of your colleague and good friend, Questlove? Oh, my gosh. Uh, Questlove won the Academy Awards for Best Direction two days ago, and it was the best thing ever. I, I couldn't be more proud of him. I was so nervous for him, and I, I just know him, you know, he's family, so I know how hard he worked in this thing, and I know how, he, he wasn't really, he was a little nervous about the Academy Awards, but then what he does is, he's such a genius that he's like, I'm gonna book, the, uh, I'm gonna DJ Beyonce and Jay-Z's party. And, <laughs> And I'm going to say I'm going to do that because that's going to, I'll be thinking about that. that that's more nerve wracking than the Academy Awards. It's like, what music are you going to play for Jay-Z uh, and, and make him dance? So he, he booked that on purpose just so that he wouldn't be nervous when the Academy Awards came. And so he was like in the crowd and he was there with his mom, who I love his mom. And I remember, I mean, all the years I've known them now, just seeing his mom in, the, in, our, in our audience. And she's so proud of him there, you know, and... Uh, to see her on, on the Academy Awards and she was crying and proud of him. I was just, I, I gotta be honest, I teared up. I was in my house just jumping up and down. I'm so happy for him. He's the best guy and he deserves all the best. But yeah, I'm so proud of him. I love Questlove. Hello. 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 Yeah. Sure, wow. Uh, oh my gosh. How did you even do this? Whoa. Wow. Oh my gosh, you're like puppets? How did you even, you're amazing. You made these? Oh my gosh, you're so talented. Thank you so much for these. Oh my gosh, this is, I'm going to, yeah, I'm gonna use these to tell the story. Where were you five minutes ago? We could have done the whole thing. Thank you very much. I see the baby too. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, hey bud, right there. In the, in the sweater, yeah, hi. Oh, it's a team. It's a team okay, effort. All right. It's, it's, it's a duet. Of course. Um, we wanted to know your favorite Taylor Swift album, and we love you, also, Jimmy. We love you, Jimmy. We love you. All right, I love you. My, tonight show tomorrow. Uh, all right, my favorite Taylor Swift album. Well, 
Uh, I'm going to say, I mean, we're really in the red Taylor's version right now, just because that was the latest thing, and she came on for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to say that for now. My favorite song right now is uh, Last, Last Great American Dynasty. We saw, the story. Yeah. We saw you singing on the Instagram story. You saw that? Yeah. That's my jam right there. <laughs> I had a marvelous time ruining everything. I, I love that jam. She's just so good and so talented. And honestly, Taylor is someone I've known forever. And uh, I know her mom. And I, I remember her mom coming to the show and her just starting out. And you're like, you could just see that she was going to be giant. And that's kind of the fun thing about the Tonight Show. You get to see a lot of artists before they're about to explode and become the biggest stars in the century. And Taylor has always been grounded, always been cool. Uh, can't say enough nice things about her or her family. Uh, and yeah, every time she comes through, comes on the show, nails it, does a sketch. She's funny. She's, uh, yeah, she's one in a, one in a zillion. Uh, I, I'm the biggest fan of Taylor and you guys too, so yeah. Uh, right there, hello. Hello. I just wanted to say thank you for being such a light and always making us smile, even when COVID first hit. Um, and you broadcasting from your home with your daughters. It was so amazing. Thank you. And it was such a gift. Thank you for saying and that. And I know I read the fine print. It was like, don't ask for anything. Don't give anything. But I wanted to gift you a book for your daughters. I, I appreciate I this. Uh, thank you very much. I, I, this is very, very nice. You don't have to give me anything. You're giving me <laughs> enough. I'm getting uh, books. I'm getting puppets. Here you go. Bella and the Great Picture Day. Thank you uh, for this. I appreciate this. I'll be reading this after my book at uh, 10 o'clock tonight if you want to stay for the late show uh, and we can make this work. I appreciate that. Uh, I got to give my, my wife credit for uh, the, doing the show from home because uh, Nancy, I, I remember we were all scared. We didn't know what was happening. We thought it was going to be off for like two weeks on NBC. We didn't really, no one knew. And uh, my wife was like, what's the plan? I was like, I don't think there is a plan. I'm like, I think you were just off for two weeks. She's like, oh, no, no, no. You get your phone and put on a show for everybody. Like, this is when people need you. This is what you do. You have to, you have to be there when people need you and when they're down, you know? And so I go, you're right. So uh, I didn't know we couldn't book guests. We didn't know what Zoom was. We didn't know anything. We just had a phone and I, my, I would make up monologue jokes and my wife wouldn't laugh. And I go, okay, you have to laugh. There's no one else in the audience. So please fake laugh, whatever you gotta do. And uh, honestly, it was, uh, I'll never forget it. It was, it was wild and my kids got involved. They jumped in uh, a couple of the scenes and that, almost to the point where I'm like, okay, enough. Okay, I, we're gonna, you know, I, I could have hired this little girl right there. I was like, to be my kid. Uh, do you have a question right there? How many books did I, did I read? Wow, how much time do you have? Okay, here we go. Uh, I've, I've, I've read books my whole life. My mom was always into books, and uh, we used to go to the library all the time. Uh, and uh, I, I just always read. I love reading. Uh, and it's the best thing to do. And it's the best thing to learn how to do. Because you'll read your whole life. It's really a better investment than candy, if you can believe it. I, I can't tell you. It is really the best thing ever, and you're going to love it. Uh, yeah, right behind you. Hello. What's my feeling with my grandma? Oh, I, I love my grandma so much, uh, and I know that she loves me more. She'll do anything for me, and she'll always take care of me. Oh, and yeah, and always the best hugs, and she just smells the best. And uh, my grandma taught me how to cook. Um, she, my grandma and my grandpa used to live uh, in our backyard, uh, not in the wild. <laughs> Just let them roam free in the backyard. They're like wild animals, and we put them in a cage, and uh, it's terrible. Uh, no, they lived in a nice house, uh, in, in a cottage behind it, but I would see them all the time, and I would go to school, and then I'd come home, and they'd babysit me, so that my, they really helped raise me, my grandparents. And uh, they taught me how to cook, they taught me how to music, different types of music, they taught me old jokes, they taught me, played comedians for me on records, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I learned a lot. My grandfather hated my hair. He was like, it's just comb it to the side. And he goes, hey, you know, hey, he was a, be an all-American boy, you know, so he didn't like the spiky hair and, you know, but I, I, they, I'm luckily that I got to know them, you know, it's, to have a grandma, it's just it's such a gift. You got to love your grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Right there, hello. Thank you. I, I mean, this, uh, we're looking at each other. We're looking to each other like we, I, I, we weren't allowed outside of our house. So I can't even see your eyes. You know, I, I'm sitting in my house and you're sitting in your house. And I'm trying to tell you like, hey, we're going to get through this together. You know, it's different than when you see each other in the street and you're like, yo, what's up? You know, it's like that's we can't we couldn't even do that. So what do we do? So I, I just yeah, I just wanted everyone to know that we're going through the same thing. We're scared, but we'll make it through and uh, we'll do whatever we, we, get, we have to do to, to get through it and, and get on the other side of this. And I think, uh, I think here we are, you know, so that says something. Yeah. For the characters in your book, yeah. is it a team family effort or was it Miguel who like suggested stuff? Oh, it's definitely uh, it's definitely team effort. Uh, I, I, I know these books look very thin, but they take so long to make. <laughs> this is uh, at least two years in the making, I would say. Uh, heart? Say it again. Yes. Oh, the cards. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, sorry, I thought you were saying hearts. I'm like, okay. Uh, yeah, hearts. Uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, we... Um, 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 I'm going to ask some questions for the people that are streaming so they don't feel left out. Um, but um, yeah, I, I painstakingly give notes on every single page. Probably drives Miguel crazy. <laughs> and Five and Friends crazy, but I, I do. And so we look through everything and go, they, it, Miguel gave me like four different families of who it could be. Like there was a brown bear family, there was a fox family, and then I just saw the panda. I'm like, oh, that's cute. That panda's cute. And I'm like, <laughs> And I, I said, oh, it's got to be like kind of purple, lavender-y type of thing. That kind of color kind of reminds me of like a Nana type of color. And it goes with the other books, um, you know, with the like, kind of that pastel-y type of colors. They all kind of pop. And so, yeah, I, I go through every single page, look at every word, look at everything, change the word, last minute. I mean, I get really nerdy with this stuff. And I'm like, like more than swimming in chocolatey fountains, that was a big discussion because they were like, what does that mean? It means nothing. I go, well, well like, like a big, ch like a chocolatey fountain, I don't know, chocolatey fountain. I go, can you have like chocolate bars floating in the, in the, in the, in the kind of like Willy Wonka. Yeah, I think you got it. Yeah. Do you want to work for my publishing company? This is a conversation we could have avoided. And I'm like, I go, just, you can be as creative as you want. Be, you know, uh, you know, think of anything. I, I thought of like more than whales, more than cheese. They, they have nothing to do with each other. They're just, a fun visual. I thought if you have a giant whale and a tiny mouse, I thought that's a good visual that you can that kids would like. And a big uh, and look. He even made the whale cute. And then he introduced a new character in this book, which is an ant, and it's basically just an eyeball with legs. <laughs> but it's, it's it's pretty cute. Uh, yeah, I do I do like it. Let me take a couple from uh, people that are streaming. These are pre-screen. Uh, thank you again for streaming these. I don't want to leave you out. Uh, Diane in New Jersey. Uh, what inspired you to write this book specifically? Uh, I, I, I said it briefly earlier, but there's a big, uh, big, uh, a lot of grandmas were upset that I didn't uh, respect and uh, pay homage to them. Uh, so I really did this for all the nanas and grandmas and everyone out there, uh, just so they know how much I appreciate their, their, their love. Um, uh, Jenny from California, what's a fun family tradition you have? It's a fun family tradition we have. Oh my gosh. You know, I, I, I don't know why, but I started making pancakes. Uh, I wish I didn't start this. I wish it was my wife. <laughs> but my kids wake up and then we go down the kitchen and we, I set up two bowls and we have egg, we have the ingredients. And then since they were babies, taught them how to make pancakes and there's flour all over the kitchen. It is a nightmare, it's a disaster. And this thing and there's butter. And then I make the pancakes and I said, what colors do you want? And then I would make the pancakes different colors. And I go, what shapes do you want? <laughs> shapes, what am I doing? Pancake art, I mean, and then it just got out of control. I'm making like, they're like, I go, I guess it's Mickey Mouse. It's something like it. I don't know what this looks like. But anyways, uh, so I, I, I'm like, uh, I think Winnie was asked by her teacher, what, are your, what do your parents do? Uh, and she said, um, my dad cooks and my mom takes care of us. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was great. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, this is from Anne from New Jersey, uh, who's streaming. I'm going to be a first time Nana in three days. Oh, congratulations on April 1st. Uh, any advice to help me be the best Nana? 
you know, yeah, just be there. Just be there for 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 the the kid, the grandkid, when they when or, or for your your son or daughter. If you know, if you whenever you can, any time, any time with grandma is great time. You know, and uh, uh, any chance you get, take it and 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 offer to come over and you know uh, you know or babysit or whatever you want to do, but uh, or anything you want to do, family nights, cooking, whatever. Any time is so memorable. I can tell you. Stories for hours about my grandma and the games we used to play. I mean, these were, I, they weren't even games. I think it, there was just a cookie tin full of buttons. <laughs> and we just look at different buttons. And I was like, oh, this, and this is like buttons from the 60s. So they were, some were big, some were furry, some were, me- that's not a game at all. You just looking at, but I would do it for hours. And, and uh, I, I remember when my, uh, you know, when my grandma uh, passed on, my sister asked for the buttons. <laughs> Because it was such a big deal for us. We loved that tin of buttons. We also had a shoe box. We took a shoe box, we turned it upside down, and we cut little holes in the, in the side of it, uh, some big and some small. And we, would, we would flick bottle caps into the shoe box across and scratch her kitchen floor and just try to play this game. And it was just like, it's just uh, creative. And uh, I always loved it. And just, yeah, I just uh, love my grandma so much. And my, I have. My face is made up of probably, you know, 98% of spit from my grandma. Because uh, whenever I had anything dirty on my face, my grandma would lick her thumb and rub it off my face. I swear, and, and I was so used to it. I'm like, yep, go for it. I don't even, and now you go, ew. I mean, of course, but not the time. That's what grandma de- did. And I was also the person that if she dropped food, I would be the first person to eat it. She'd just shove it in my mouth. Uh, there was no two-second rule, like, just give it to Jimmy. He'll eat it, yeah. I see you right there with a nice haircut. Hey, buddy. What are you going to write? What's the next book that I'm going to write? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I mean, it looks like probably, oh, you know what it really is? Uh, I've worked on one. I've written one uh, with Jennifer Lopez, with J-Lo. And this is a cool thing. Uh, we, we wanted to do something together. She's a great guest on the show, and actually I know her mom really well too, uh, Lupe, who comes to the show all the time. And we're like, what can we do together? And I was like, hello, a song. Uh, and she was like, yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, I was like, I go, what else can we do? So I'm trying to think of bits, and I'm like, oh, maybe let's do a, uh, a we, you know, you're a great mom. Uh, we both have kids. I go, let's do a kid's book. And so she was like, I love it. Let's, let's, see, let's come up with an idea. And I came up with a bunch of ideas. And I settled on one called compoyo. And it's about, you don't eat the chicken. Um, it's things you do with chicken. So it's learning Spanish through, uh, so it's like a kind of this or that book and teaching babies a new language. Because I wish I learned uh, a different language uh, when I was younger. I learned in high school, which was great, uh, but it was very limited. I, I think if I started earlier, I would have... Uh, so, Compoyo, look for that one. That's the next one. And I want to thank my agent for asking that question. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, sir, right there. Hey, buddy. Oh, I see you. Uh, this is a combo question. Uh, what is your favorite book, and what New York City restaurant would you choose to read it in? <laughs> my favorite book, like an uh, like adult book or a kid book? She asked, oh, okay, uh, I, loved, uh, I loved a book called, uh, there's a monster at the end of this book uh, when I was growing up. Remember with Grover? And it was so, so creative, uh, and it was, a, it, was a, it was a Grover going like, do not, do not keep reading. Uh, there's a monster at the end of this book. And I'm like, and then you turn the page like, stop, stop, stop. I warned you, do not read this. There's a monster at the end. And it was like, and you kept turning, then he was building a brick wall to stop you from turning. Cause it, and then when you got to the end, you realized that he was the monster. <laughs> Lovable, cuddly Grover. And he was like, and it was, uh, uh, I love that book. And I read it all the time. I just also thought that was such a creative way of writing uh, a book because it was almost like a show. It was very, uh, yeah, brilliantly done. Sesame Street done so many great things, but I love that. Uh, I also, uh, uh, if you're going adult books, uh, I love uh, uh, Confederacy of Dunces is one of my favorite books. Um, Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl's a favorite book I, I read every now and then. Um, I think there's another one out there that I love. Those are the two that stick out for me, yeah. Was that the combo question? The restaurant that we read it in. I would read Confederacy of Dunces probably at a Starbucks. 
Yeah, no, no knock against Starbucks. Uh, uh, Monster at the end of this, I, I, you know, God, New York has so many great restaurants and I've, I've supported them, you know, for delivery throughout the whole thing, but now you can go to them and it's amazing. A restaurant. Oh my gosh. Down like, you're like, you're going to give me silverware? You're going to pour water? And I'm like, don't take any of this for granted. It's so great what everyone does and, uh, and super tip uh, your servers if you can, but even just going supporting is awesome. Uh, I just went to one of my favorites, uh, Scalinatella, the other day. It's a great Italian restaurant, uh, which I always forget the address. 63rd and 1st, 61st and 3rd, something like that. It's downstairs, yep. And really kind of there's no real menu at Scalinatella. There's one of those restaurants like, hey, Jimmy, what are you doing? What do you, like, what do you feel like today? You're a chicken. He's like, well, you're going to have the ravioli. You go, okay, perfect. Whatever you want. We're good. We're, whatever you feel like uh, serving me. I'm all good. Uh, uh, right here. Hey, bud, with the hat. Hi, bud. Right there, you. Um, what's your favorite book series? My favorite book series? I'm assuming you're talking like a, like a, what, uh, like a Harry Potter type of vibe? I love Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter is a genius, a brilliant books, so well written. I remember I went on vacation to go off the grid once. I went to Costa Rica and stayed in like the rainforest, like in the jungles for like a week or a week and a half. Uh, this is around post SNL. And I just missed pop culture so bad. And I was just like jonesing to get, uh, is, you know, no, there was no cell phones or anything like that. And some kid had a Harry Potter book and I, I stole it kind of. And I just, I just needed pop culture and I read it in like two days. It was the best book. It was so uh, creative and the, uh, the just, it's just so well written. So I, I love the Harry Potter series, that, they're, they're great. When I was a kid, I liked Hardy Boys. You probably don't know that at all, but it was like a detective thing about two brothers and Nancy Drew. Well, that was my, yeah. I was more Hardy Boys than Nancy Drew, but yeah, but sure, I love Nancy Drew as well. Yeah, but check out Hardy Boys, they're pretty good uh, books, yeah. Uh, all the way in the back, I don't want to forget you. Hey, bud, your hand, yep. Oh, yeah. And I'm trying to take my girlfriend somewhere on Friday. Where do you recommend? <laughs> He's new to NYC. Where does he take his girlfriend on Friday? Okay. Uh, uh, how? Uh, <laughs> You, True. Yeah, how, how, old, how old are you? I'm 19. All right, Fresh so you have no calls. money. No. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what you do? All right. Uh, uh, can, can you somehow make your way to the Brooklyn Bridge? Yes. And walk across the Brooklyn Bridge? Yeah. yeah. It is unbelievable. When you do that, you, you want to, people used to do that as a, uh, that's like going to Disney World. It, people would travel just to go like, wait, there's a bridge that goes over the water? And it's just meant for walking, and it's gorgeous. And, and when you do it, you will never, ever forget it. You just walk and you're like, this is cool what we're doing. Walk over the Brooklyn Bridge. It's free. You'll never forget it. So good. And once you get on the other side, get to Brooklyn. There's probably a pizzeria around there. That's good. Get a slice. But it's romantic and uh, she'll be with you forever. Yeah. Word. If that's what you want. <laughs> yeah. Or go to Barnes & Noble. You can do that as well, which I did, uh, I did the other day with my wife. Yeah. Hey. I saw you went to Macaulay a couple weeks ago. Yes. Lucali is the best pizza I think of. Uh, yeah, I think of. I, uh, Joe's is my favorite. That's around here. I love Joe's. That's good pizza. Uh, but Lucali's, I just, uh, yeah, I went there because a friend told me about it, and I go, I got to check it out. The guy's amazing. He's brilliant and he's genius. And I thought, I think I invented a pizza because I was challenging him. I go, do you have any mashed potatoes pizza? He's like, what are you talking about? I go. Well, I'm Irish. I'm just saying I've had it before, like mashed potato and bacon. He goes, get out of here. You know, like, just leave. And then I went back and he goes, Jimmy, I've been thinking. I did something with that, uh, that mashed potato pizza. Check, out, check this out. He goes, do you want to make it with me? I go, let's do it. So we put, we just did this last night. It's weird that you said this. So I put mashed potatoes on the, on the thing with uh, boiled potatoes. And then we put mustard and it, uh, we made a knish pizza. <laughs> And it was awesome. And he, he has some tweaking to do. He put some scallion on there, a little salt. We got to add that stuff. But it was great. And uh, I think I invented a, 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 sli a New York slice of pizza. Yeah, it's a Kanish pizza. I can't believe I invented it. Not quite as Irish, but um, it's, very, it's kind of a Jewish pizza. Yeah. Uh, and I'll take that as well. I love it. Hey. When you were a child, what was your dream to be went as an adult? Uh, when I was a kid, you know, I, I think at one point I wanted to be a baseball player. I wanted to be a priest. 
Uh, I, was an, I was an altar boy, I was fantastic, I was the best, and I used to ring the bells better than anyone in the whole wide world, and I remember talking to my friend, he said, that might be your first time on stage, because you're on an altar, and people are in the pews in front of you, and you're like, performing, you're like, hey mom, hey dad, you know, and, uh, but I loved it, I loved the whole, uh, I loved the way everyone dressed, I loved the smell of incense, uh, and I was really into it, uh, and, and baseball, and then I just kind of uh, got into comedy and got into to, to girls, and I think uh, I went a different direction, you know, and, uh, but I remember, you know, uh, my, speaking of comedy, my, uh, my grandparents taught me about, uh, my parents would play Rodney Dangerfield all the time, so I was probably 10 or 12, and I would put on a tie, and my parents would give me 50 cents, and they'd go, go perform for our party. And I would do Rodney, and I would go up and like, all right, okay, a good crowd, all right? Well, my wife's cooking is terrible. I mean, since when is toast have bones, you know, all right? And she told me to take out the trash. I said, you cooked it, you take it out, all right? You know? And I would do all these jokes, not even really knowing what I'm talking about, as Rodney. And that's just kind of uh, how I kind of started performing. And yeah, uh, right there in the back, blonde, hi. Yeah, you. If you could choose any celebrity to babysit your kids, who would it be? <laughs> Drew Barrymore has babysat my kid. She's amazing. She's a great one. If I could, oh gosh, who's the dream celebrity to babysit my children? Gosh, now I'm like trying to think who would be the, the dream to babysit? I mean, Drew, hey buddy, uh, Drew, <laughs> I gotta say, Justin Timberlake, Jessica Biel are good. Uh, they, they, all these people have all kind of babysat my kid a little bit, you know. Uh, but yeah, I'd probably say Drew Barrymore, and uh, just she's fun, and uh, and she loves kids, and so yeah. So that I've seen it in action. It, she's great, right there in the front. Yeah, you have to. Thank you so much. Thank you, I appreciate that. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would never, I would never. I swear I would never. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm wondering, are you planning to translate your book in another language? Yeah, the great thing about, thank you for saying, how do I translate this um, to, to French? Uh, yeah. Uh, are you French? Yeah. What do you call Nana in, in, in French? What do you call a grandma? Mami. Mami? Mami. Ooh. Mami. Spell? <laughs> yeah. Mami? Mami. Mami. Oh, Mami. See, it sounds so cute. Mami. <laughs> Mami. Mami. Uh, 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 J'adore? What's, what's love? Je t'aime. Oh my gosh, Mami, je t'aime. <laughs> now it's getting steamy. Oh my gosh, Mami, je t'aime. Mami, je t'aime. Oh my gosh. Uh, ooh la la, ça so. <laughs> uh, you know what happens is if when the books uh, do well here in 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 the United States, uh, they do get changed to other languages. And I want to say, Dada is how many languages is it in? Seven different languages. Dada is and. So, it's wild to see what they do. And it's kind of, what's good about these books is that they are kind of universal. Everyone has uh, a, a, a dada, mama, you know, a, a grandma or something in their life. And so it is translatable. And uh, especially dada too, it's just really, that was just moo, quack, ba, dada, you know. Uh, so, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm so, that's the great thing about, you know, streaming and all this stuff. And like, you know, I think about Johnny Carson and, Steve Allen, you know, and those guys didn't have this technology. So I'm lucky to be in this uh, in 2022 where I can do the Tonight Show, and it's not just for the United States; it's worldwide. It's people, we have our audiences packed with all people from uh, Dubai, Germany, you know, everywhere, uh, you know, and uh, it's the greatest thing. It's so cool that we get to speak to that many people. Uh, and, and, and get to do all these, these things. But I, I love, I'd love to uh, get the book translated. And uh, yeah, we, we, will. we will. We will definitely work on that. Did I answer your question about 
when I was a kid, what were you asking me about? Is this what I wanted to do when I was a kid? My dream job, yeah, I think we, yeah, I was a priest, and then I wanted to work at IBM because my dad worked at IBM. Uh, and that was, I, I loved it. That's what he did. He fixed computers. I got into computer science in college. And uh, yeah, that's how much my parents believed in my comedy career. They're like, yeah, <laughs> go study computers. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I did, uh, yeah. So, and it was, and then I just, uh, my mom told me about an impression contest on the radio. Uh, she heard about it and she said, you should enter the contest because I hear the voices you do in your bedroom. Uh, I'm like, what other things are you uh, yeah, listening to? Uh, but anyways, uh, I ended that contest and ended up winning uh, the contest and started my career. Uh, and, and then the rest is, uh, is history. I want to do a couple more from the, the streamers out there uh, selected. And then um, let's see. Uh, the, 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 uh, is Alexis from Texas. Come on. <laughs> you cannot move. You can never move. If you're Alexis from Texas. Is there a specific message you want children to get from reading your book? Uh, be happy. Where's your hat? <laughs> uh, I think be happy, laugh, and learn how to read. And, 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 and you know, it's corny to say reading is fun, but actually it is fun if you make it fun and you start young and, and read as much as you can and be curious. Uh, there's nothing you can learn that's better than uh, reading, I don't think. You know, uh, it's, it's the greatest. I love it. Hello. Hi, oh, oh, sorry, you're next. Okay. Sorry. So I want to say thank you because I'm an ESL teacher, so basically making the books like your language learners can read them as well. Ah, and I then, love it. Um, also, like, my question is, um, how did you get started into writing children's books? And like, what's your advice for someone that I would like to write children's books? First of all, thank you for being a teacher and a round of applause for teachers. I mean, honestly, pay them whatever they want. We all learned that lesson. I mean, gosh, I'm like, you do not want me teaching my own children. I'm like, please, thank you so much. What, what, where would we be without teachers? Uh, and man, uh, do we, we really uh, underappreciated the uh, teachers, you know, and the, uh, you, we used, you homeschool and Zoom school, and you go, oh, we just miss you. We need teachers. We need them. Uh, but you know, I think with this, what I found was that it just just try it. Just do anything. Try anything. It, what's the worst that could happen? You know, just do it. If it's fun, creative, do it. Put it out there in the world. You never know where it's going to go. And I thought uh, the first one would be just a fun, kind of a goofy thing, Dada. You know, and then uh, here, the, then they're having kids read it to me, and parents in tears going, you. It's my first, my kids are reading a book to me and, and laughing. And I go, and it's like a memorable thing. I, I, and I never, I, it's a reward I didn't even see coming. I never thought I, that, I, that would be, I thought it'd be a funny thing to do on the show, talk about it. I'd love to go see my book in a bookstore, you know, uh, or in a library. I just thought it'd be cool. And, uh, you know, and it's beyond my wildest expectations. And here I am, my fourth one in the series. I go, what am I doing? This is crazy. It's, but it's the best it's to see a kid read your stuff and smile and laugh. It's nothing like it. It's, it's so rewarding and it's so lucky. But so I would say, try everything, just keep doing it. And with the internet and everything now, put it out there, put it out, just put it out for free. It doesn't matter. Get it out there. And then once it gets a following, you know, then maybe you'll make money out of it. But it's like, don't do it. For, just do it. Just put it out there and go, yep, I'm doing another one. I'm doing another one and just keep doing it. And you'll get better and better at it. And like, yeah, I, I, that's, uh, that's my advice. Thank you for your You're awesome. Oh, please, thank you. Hello. Hi, I'm a big fan of yours. And I want to know how you get a role in the movie I was learning like a lot of time. How you get a role in Jennifer Wolfman? Yeah, uh, I, I get it. Thank you for asking. It's a great question. I was. For you. you have a gift for me? Thank you very much. <laughs> I, uh, no more. I mean, I'm really, I'm getting books. I'm getting books. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Books. I love this. Thank you. I know I really am. I'm getting. I'm going. I got my own swag bag. And it's like, but I, and I'm taking all this stuff home. Uh, how did I get a role, a role in "Marry Me" with J Lo? Yeah, I, I just from being a, a, a stud. Uh, that's I'm really in high demand to be in every movie. Uh, uh, no, that was again, we wanted to work together. Jennifer Lopez is a great guest and a good friend of mine. And so she was like, I'm doing this movie and I need to have someone be like a talk show host. And I just said, well, I happen to know one. Uh, 
you know, and I go, great, I would love to do anything with her. So yeah, so that's how that all came about. And I'm like, and weirdly enough, I got nervous acting, you know, in that because I'm like, even though I'm playing me, they're like, all right, just say, ladies and gentlemen, you know, and, blah, blah. and I go, ladies and gentlemen, and they go, no, you do this every night, dude. And I go, yeah, I know, what am I doing? Uh, but yeah, I'm honored to be in, in, in that movie. Let's take, uh, we have time for two more? One more? Let's just say two more, right? Just uh, right there, right there. My man, yep. What's my favorite food? Pizza. I can eat pizza every night of my life. Pizza or tacos? I love both. Pizza and tacos is my favorite food. What's your favorite food? Tacos? Fine. You eat the tacos out of the pizza, we'll be roommates. It'd be fantastic. Uh, all the way in the back right there. All the way in the back. Yes, right there. No, yes, with this beautiful scarf. Yep. Quick two-parter. Number one, I'm seriously jonesing for some go on get. So I'm hoping Oh, go on get. <laughs> now go on, go on get now. And two, are we gonna get to see you do some stand-up? Ooh, we're gonna get to see some stand-up. You know, it's so interesting. I, I just don't have my act anymore. I don't, you know, I worked on I did a lot of impressions. I worked on that act for like 10 years, and I still only had probably like 45 minutes, really. But I don't know how these comedians do it. You know, they put out this new hour every couple of years. It's so much work. Uh, but uh, I, I, would, I would do it again. I'd love to do stand-up. Uh, I, I enjoy talking to people. I'm lucky enough I get to do it every night, a little at the beginning of the show, talk to everyone for 10 minutes. But uh, I would work on some If you go see it, yeah, I'll work on stand-up. Yeah. All right, guys. I want to thank you again for coming out. Hi, I love you. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for all this swag. I appreciate it. Be safe. Thank you for being here. Thank you for wearing masks. You were very well behaved. Uh, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I really uh, appreciate this, and I love you guys. Uh, thank you. Bye. Oh, I love you more. I love you more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Yep, thank you. Let's get oh, another yeah. hand for Jimmy success. Fallon, folks. Oh, should I get the book? Sorry, I should get the book, too. Should I get, grab a book? Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, once more, extra signed copies of Nana Loves You More and Backlist titles book. that are also signed by Jimmy are available in the back you, by bro. the cash register. We also have some April upcoming events. So Saturday, April 2nd, we have middle grade author Clarabel Ortega for Witchlings. Thursday, April 7th, we have Australian musician Warren Ellis for Nina Simone's Gum. And Tuesday, April 19th, Harry Potter actress and Greenpeace ambassador Bonnie Wright will be here. Thanks, everybody, so much. We hope to see you then. Have a good night.